Welcome back. Our next Lenten hymn, The Glory of These 40 Days, is attributed to Pope Gregory I, who was Pope in the mid to late 6th century. He was born into a very well-off family that was also known for their devotion to God and their devotion to helping others. So Gregory was well-educated, and when his father died, he became a member of the Senate. After his father's death, he devoted himself and all of his wealth to the church. He found six monasteries, and after that he retired to Rome as a Benedictine monk. Well, his retirement only lasted about a year until Pope Plegius II sent him off to Constantinople. He spent six years in that city before he returned to Rome, but soon he was given the opportunity to go to Britain to evangelize. It was three days into this journey when he got recalled to Rome in order for him to be the next pope. He genuinely tried to get out of this position. He didn't see himself as being in that position of authority. However, his pontificate was marked by his administrative skills and the many mission trips he sponsored to Africa and Spain and Ireland. He was also a very strong advocate for tolerance of Jews and heretics. He was vocal about condemning slavery and wrote many powerful homilies that are now included in some of his most noted achievements. Gregory I's biggest contribution to the church, though, is arguably the creation of the Gregorian chant, a style of tonal prayer that we still use in the church today. He did, of course, contribute a few hymns as well. And one of these hymns is the one that we are going to look at today on the 20th day of our Lenten meditations. And so take a moment to take a deep breath and let's hear the words that we have inherited from Pope Gregory the First. The glory of these 40 days we celebrate with songs of praise for Christ, through whom all things were made, himself has fasted and has prayed. Alone and fasting, Moses saw the loving God who gave the law, and Elijah, fasting, came the steeds of chariots of flames. So Daniel trained his mystic sight, delivered from the lion's might, and John, the bridegroom's friend, became the herald of Messiah's name. Then grant us, Lord, like them, to be full oft in fast and prayer with thee. Our spirits strengthened with thy grace, and give us joy to see thy face. O Father, Son, and Spirit, Blessed to thee be every prayer addressed, who art in threefold name adored from age to age, the only Lord. So our questions for this time of meditation. First one is, during the early church, prayer and fasting were closely tied. Do you still see a connection between these two disciplines? And are they particularly practiced during the Lenten season? The second one, and one that I'm really curious about, how is your prayer life? Is it as vibrant as you want it to be? And if not, how would you like to see your prayer time be deepened and become more powerful for you? 
And finally, do you try any type of fasting during these 40 days of Lent? Be it the giving up of meat on certain days or be it the practice of fasting until a certain time of the day, any of those practices, do you try any of them during Lent? And have you found them to be beneficial? Have they been helpful for your spiritual life? And so while you're contemplating all of those questions, I hope that the rest of your day today is full of joy and wonder in the world. And until we meet again tomorrow, please take care and may God bless.